The movie begins in January 1972. Amid the ongoing Vietnamese War, South Korean operators work on the radio in the middle of the night on the base in Nha Trang, Vietnam. To his shock, a missing platoon last seen on an island called Our Point, eerily speaks through the radio channel, asking for rescue. The operators frantically ask for clarification, but the voice screams, insisting they are dying. Meanwhile, an injured soldier wrapped in bandages awakens in a hospital. He is informed by Captain Park about the strange transmission, which the soldier cannot believe is possible since he collected all the tags of his dead squad before returning to base. He screams in terror, claiming the Viet Cong were not responsible for the casualties, hinting at something more sinister. Elsewhere, Lt. Choi and his colleague are enjoying a night out in the red light district of Vietnam. While in bed with a prostitute, he hears a noise, rushing outside the balcony to investigate. He sees a cleaning lady and shoots her, revealing her identity as a rebel soldier. Unfortunately, he cannot save his colleague, who dies from a gunshot in the next room. He brings his body to the investigation division and speaks with Captain Park, who checks in on his development. He is given a dossier to lead a squad on a mission at our point to extract the missing soldiers from the radio transmission within a week. Though initially hesitant to go without his old platoon, the captain persuades him by burning the record of last night's incident. Meanwhile, the assigned squad finishes their routine prostate checkup with the military doctor when one of their mates, Jang, reveals his age, making him the youngest recruit. Later, their platoon commander, Sergeant Jin, debriefs them about the R-Point mission, promising to award an honorable early discharge when completed. Not long after, Choi arrives and joins the squad at the port. While waiting for the boat, the men talk about Jin being a cold-blooded killer and Choi's bad reputation. Upon arrival at our point, the squad takes a photo of themselves to commemorate their first day. As they traverse the thick jungle, they are ambushed by an unseen opposition. Lieutenant Choi fires a grenade launcher, blasting at an abandoned dugout. They soon discover a badly wounded Viet Cong woman beside a weak old corpse of a soldier. Though hesitant, they are about to perform a mercy kill when Choi orders them to move out, leaving her alone to die. As they reach a field, one of the men reads an ominous text engraved on a stone tablet explaining how hundreds of soldiers were thrown into the lake, with a temple built on top of it. Dubious, they continue their journey, not knowing the unreadable text warns they cannot return. At night, the men relax in a grassy knoll while Choi contacts the base. They cannot sleep, feeling uneasy about their surroundings, suspecting they have defiled a sacred resting place. The following morning, the air has turned foggy. As the soldiers awaken, they become shocked upon gazing at a mysterious derelict mansion appearing out of nowhere. They immediately search the interior of the building and investigate the corridors for signs of life. Some find abandoned electronics inside a crate, unsure of their usage. Choi gathers the unit in the main hall, debriefing them about our point as a sacred ground for the Vietnamese. He splits the group into two factions, with Jin leading a scouting party while the rest search the mansion. Later, while trekking the forest floor, Corporal Jo Byung-hoon splits up from the group when he decides to pee in the bushes. Realizing they left him, he panics, shouting in all directions for Sergeant Oh in the unit. He stumbles upon other soldiers that slowly traverse the tall grass, mistaking them for his comrades. The mysterious group crouches, disappearing as soon as Joe stands. Elsewhere, the search party led by Jin looks for Joe in an area surrounded by ruins. They find him cowering inside a cavern, feeling unnerved by his experience in the field. Later at night, as the electricity powers up inside the mansion, he shares his supernatural ordeal with the men, claiming he was with the missing soldiers. He then frantically checks Sergeant O's helmet, believing a message about Young Sook is written on it, confusing the group. Suddenly, they hear helicopters hovering above them, so they leave the mansion and discover a troop of American soldiers led by First Class Sergeant Beck. Choi welcomes and allows them to spend the night inside their temporary shelter. The American sergeant explains that the French owned the building until they were extermined. His troops have been on our point for months to locate a missing American soldier. Before departing, he tells Choi not to linger about the rumor that there are supernatural entities somewhere inside. He warns him not to touch anything on the second floor. A while after the Americans leave, Corporal Byun Moon sub repairs the radio, which can only receive local transmissions. Curiously, he tells Choi that he intercepted a signal from a French army corporal, Jacques, claiming to have a twin brother named Paul and that they will visit their unit soon. The lieutenant becomes dubious since they are the only squad on the island presently. Meanwhile, Joe is confronted by Sergeant O oh about the ominous message about Young Sook, who is revealed to be one of the missing soldiers and a close friend. Later, during bedtime, Bun surprises the group with music from the radio, delighting everyone to dance to a tune by the rock band, The Ventures. The soldiers are having a good time when suddenly, the radio changes to a transmission where horrified screams are heard. 
Choi picks up the radio and listens to the screams inside his room as the men look at each other in bewilderment. Not long after, Park and Cook argue outside the mansion, with the former threatening to report him having syphilis. As Park peels at a picture of Cook's wife and child, an apparition of Private Young appears, startling them. When the lieutenant looks outside his window, he is stunned to see a vision of the Viet Cong lady dressed in white standing in the middle of the field, the same woman they shot down days ago. By morning, Choi is informed of Private Young's disappearance. Joe and Park take a break outside when blood spills on the ladder. They soon discover Private Young's hanging corpse dangling above them. Choi and the unit recover the body and scrutinize it on the field, with Jin suggesting reporting the incident to the base. They return to the ruins and find an incense burning on an altar. Jin orders the men to set a booby trap, believing Viet Cong soldiers are in the area. While the men settle at night, Choi informs the captain about the events. Captain Park becomes angry, informing him the deceased is one of the missing men, and only nine units arrived at the island with Choi. Later, the men discuss the angry phone call, realizing the captain is right. Joe remembers seeing Jung at the beach taking their picture. The lieutenant hangs Jung's dog tags and examines the photograph closely. Meanwhile, Sergeant O oh is on guard duty outside when he reminisces about Jung. Jin, who has trouble sleeping, recalls meeting with Captain Park about closing the case on the missing soldiers. As midnight clocks in, it is now day three at our point. Lieutenant Choi continues to see the ghost of the Viet Cong lady, shining a flashlight at her while she walks away quickly to the field. He reaches a mass grave, reading the names of the deceased French soldiers. Upon seeing the grave of the French soldiers Jacques and Paul, who Bune insists spoke on the radio, he becomes unnerved. Meanwhile, Sergeant O panics upon realizing it is the ghost of Jung sitting next to him at the dugout. He dashes to the ruins, where Jung appears, haunting him. The unit hears an explosion and rushes to the scene, only to find O triggering the booby trap, drenched in his blood. He begs a creeped out Joe for forgiveness before dying. Choi examines the fallen soldier's helmet, grabbing the pearl emblem attached to the side. Returning to the mansion, Joe becomes fully convinced they are being haunted by supernatural entities and the island is cursed, angering Jin, who refuses to believe in his claims. He confronts a downcast Choi, pleading for him to abort the mission, but the lieutenant knows they will be ridiculed. Instead, they must cover the truth, forming a scouting party to further survey the region and investigate the disturbances. The unit divides into two groups on day four, covering the R5 and R2 regions of the island. Choi reminds them to report their status every 30 minutes and never stray from the group. Surprisingly, most men team up with Sergeant Jin out of fear, leaving Park and a hesitant cook to follow Lieutenant Choi. Moments later, Sergeant Jin and his team stray off course. To keep them busy, he secretly throws the dead soldier's dog tags for them to find. Elsewhere, Choi, Park, and Cook return to the stone tablet's location, reading the text warning they cannot leave the island. Later, while the men are trying to recover a signal on the radio, Jin enters the bamboo forest, shooting an unseen figure through the trees. Simultaneously, Choi's group discovers a crashed Huey helicopter with the rotting dead bodies of the American troops, revealing they were apparitions when they visited the mansion. Cook becomes anxious, but Choi promises to return safely to his wife and child when the mission is complete. Meanwhile, as Jin falls into a cave, his team is traversing a muddy swamp when they shockingly stumble upon the corpses of the soldiers floating in the water. Joe freaks out when he sees a ghost among the reeds. Inside the cave, Jin hears the radio broadcast of the missing soldiers deep within a pool-like area, discovering another dead body. Elsewhere, Joe becomes too unnerved that he mistakes Cook for an entity in the swap, accidentally killing him. Before dying, he tells a distraught Park to return home whatever happens. The men angrily castigate Joe for his reckless actions. Not long after they return to the mansion, they search the second floor for supplies but find the area empty. The men have become genuinely convinced that they're encountered supernatural beings ever since they arrived. Realizing they cannot trust one other, they point their weapons at each other, but Choi defuses the situation, ordering them to bring down the remaining equipment. Later, he calls the headquarters for an immediate evacuation, only to be informed that a helicopter will arrive by dawn. As everyone expresses their exasperation, Sergeant Jin returns, feeling guilty about coming to the island. Park approaches him, dropping to his knees and begging him to go home. Shockingly, he beheads the 18-year-old soldier, forcing the men to kill him. Joe sees the apparitions of the dead soldiers, who disappear in a flash. With the situation growing increasingly dire by the minute, Bune attempts to contact HQ, but the signal has died. Lieutenant Choi orders everyone to recite their name and rank or risk getting shot. Everyone complies except a possessed Bune, warning the men they are coming. Choi shoots him, not knowing he pulls the pin from a grenade, causing an explosion. 
Sergeant Jang is bleeding and blinded by the shrapnel. Suddenly, Joe shoots Corporal Lee, forcing Choi to angrily kill him. While restraining the blind soldier, he looks into his pocket, finding a picture of the Viet Cong woman with French soldiers. He then realizes she had killed them, along with the Americans. Suddenly, her apparition appears, forcing Choi to instruct Jang to aim and fire at him to prevent his possession. He dies as Jang calls out for him. A helicopter rescue team arrives the following morning, saving the blind soldier while discovering his dead unit. The movie ends as the radio transmission calls for help, seeping blood out of it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.